the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, as we continue on in our Lenten journey, let us prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries by acknowledging our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that purifying us by the sacred practice of penance, you may lead us in sincerity of heart to attain the holy things to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. Israel loved Joseph best of all his sons, for he was the child of his old age, and he made him a long tunic. When his brothers saw that their father loved him best of all his sons, they hated him so much that they would not even greet him. One day, when his brothers had gone to pasture their father's flocks at Shechem, Israel said to Joseph, Your brothers, you know, are tending our flocks at Shechem. Get ready, I will send you to them. So Joseph went after his brothers and caught up with them in Dothan. They noticed him from a distance, and before he came up to them, they plotted to kill him. They said to one another, Here comes that master dreamer. Come on, let us kill him and throw him into one of the cisterns here. We could say that a wild beast devoured him. We shall then see what comes of his dreams. When Reuben heard this, he tried to save him from their hands, saying, We must not take his life. Instead of shedding blood, he continued, Just throw him into that cistern there in the desert, but do not kill him outright. His purpose was to rescue him from their hands and return him to his father. So when Joseph came to them, they stripped him of the long tunic he had on. Then they took him and threw him into the cistern, which was empty and dry. They then sat down to their meal. Looking up, they saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead. There came camels laden with gum, balm, and resin to be taken down to Egypt. Judah said to his brothers, What is, be, what is to be gained by killing our brother and concealing his blood? Rather, let us sell them to these Ishmaelites, instead of doing away with him ourselves. After all, he is our brother, our own flesh. His brothers agreed. They sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for twenty pieces of silver. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Remember the marvels the Lord has done. Remember the marvels the Lord has done. When the Lord called down a famine on the land and ruined the crop that sustained them, he sent a man before them, Joseph, sold as a slave. Remember the marvels the Lord has done. They had weighed him down with fetters, and he was bound with chains. Till this prediction came to pass, and the word of the Lord proved him true. Remember the marvels the Lord has done. The king sent and released him. The ruler of the people set him free. He made him lord of his house and ruler of all his possessions. Remember the marvels the Lord has done. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that everyone who believes in him might have eternal life. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit, A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, Hear another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a hedge around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a tower. Then he leased it to tenants and went on a journey. 
when vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to obtain his produce. But the tenants seized the servants in one they beat, another they killed, and a third they stoned. Again, he sent other servants, more numerous than the first ones, but they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, thinking, they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to one another, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him and acquire his inheritance. They seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. What will the owner of the vineyard do to those tenants when he comes? They answered him, He will put those wretched men to a wretched death and lease his vineyard to other tenants, who will give him the produce at the proper times. Jesus said to them, Did you never read in the scriptures the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? By the Lord has this been done, and it is wonderful in our eyes. Therefore I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that will produce its fruit. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they knew that he was speaking about them. And although they were attempting to arrest him, they feared the crowds, for they regarded him as a prophet. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In both of our readings today, in our first reading and in the gospel, we see and are and listen to thoughts of violence. We hear in our first reading today from the book of Genesis how Joseph is hated by his brothers because their father Israel loves him more than all of them together. And so these brothers of Joseph plot to kill him, plot to put him to death. And only through the intercession of Reuben, only through the intercession of of Judah does Joseph escape death and instead is sold into slavery. In our gospel and parable that we hear, we hear how these evil tenants that have been rented a vineyard by the owner of the vineyard put to death all that the masters, all the people that the master sends to them to bring forth the harvest, to take what is due to the owner. Tenants instead put these men to death and ultimately even put the son of the owner to death. So full of greed are they that their ways are turned. In both of these passages, in both of these scriptures that we hear today, we are reminded of the true and real presence of evil in our life. That there are people of evil intent in our lives. People who have become so self-absorbed, so self-centered, that they have turned into evil. The brothers of Joseph fell into their evil thoughts because they were they felt that they were not receiving the same love from their father and felt a sense of emptiness in their heart. And then and the evil tenants in our gospel today become so self-centered and self-focused on, on acquiring wealth and an inheritance for themselves that they turn to violence. Both of these gospel, both of these readings today are a reminder for us of what happens when we fail to put ourselves close to God, when our attention focuses inward on our own wants, on our own needs, on our own desires. And yet, even in the midst of these violent times, the Lord continues to work His wonder. We know what happens to Joseph, that because he is sold into slavery, the Lord continues to bless him nonetheless, and eventually is able to bring freedom to his family and even keep them from starvation in the time of famine. We know that the parable that we hear today is meant to be a parable of the Lord sent of God sending his beloved son who suffered and died for us, the one for us, the gift of eternal life. And if we are united with God, we are able to see the marvels that the Lord continues to perform for us. And so these readings today is our reminder for us that even in the face of evil, even in the face of sin, and destruction in our life, that we are called to look for the Lord, to search for the Lord who continues to work wonders and marvels in our time and invites us to continue to journey deeper into his love for us. And that is indeed what we are doing during this time of Lent. We are letting go of our evil thoughts. We are letting go of our temptations. We are letting go of our sinful ways to hopefully center ourselves back to our loving God as we walk together with Christ on the journey to the cross, 
of this world to the Paschal celebration of Christ's passion, death, and resurrection. And so today, as we are reminded that evil truly is present in our life, we are also reminded of the great wonders and great love that our Lord continues to show for us. That we are invited to share the mystery of God's love for us and invited to wander more fully and more deeply into that beautiful covenant with Him. As we spiritually celebrate our celebration of the Eucharist today, let us pray that we may never wander far from the Lord, that in the face of all that we encounter, we may continue to seek Christ as we walk on this Lenten journey to meet and to encounter our Lord every day. So trusting in our loving God, we bring to him our prayers and our petitions. And so we pray for our church. May we always walk in the path of the Lord who continues to perform great deeds for us. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for unity in our nation, that we may continue to choose ways of harmony. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for all of our seminarians, all those who are continuing to discern the vocation to priesthood, especially those who are studying at St. John's and at the Queen of Angels House for priest information. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for all those who are sick, all those who are recovering from or struggle with any illness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have died and gone before us. May they enter into the fullness of God's eternal kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray especially at this Mass today for the needs and intentions of Tom Lunsford, for the repose of the soul of P.J. Manny Lunsford, for the repose of the soul of Jack Nolan, for whom this Mass is being offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The quiet of our hearts is spoken aloud wherever we are. We bring to our God our own prayers and petitions today. For these we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving and merciful God, listen to the prayers we bring before you as we ask them trusting in Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands have become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May your merciful grace prepare your servants, O God, for the worthy celebration of these mysteries, and lead them to it by the devout way of life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise, we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, 
God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like a deep fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. From the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Our Lady of the Assumption, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Now the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will. Let it reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you all. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am now worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal salvation, we pray, O Lord, that we may set our course so well as to attain the redemption you promise through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God.